So my testable question was, when used to separate oil from mined oil sands, does the ultrasonic process produce oil with a lower viscosity than the oil produced with the hydro transport process? So I have two different procedures, one for the hydro transport process and one for the ultrasonic process. They're the same as the procedures from my previous test, except there were a few things added. Um, because I had to test the viscosity of the oil, I had to skim the oil off the top of the beakers, um, filter the oil to make sure there was no water in the oil because if there's water in the oil, it will give the oil a lower viscosity, which means I would have inaccurate results. Um, then put the oil on the rheometer and then wait for the results. So, to measure viscosity, you use a rheometer, and the way the rheometer I used worked was there was two plates. You put the oil or the liquid you were testing on the bottom plate. The top plate came down on the bottom plate and turned to measure the amount of resistance that was that the liquid has. So, for the hydro transport process, the oil sample was really thick and um, like gooey. It was sticky and was really like, had a lot of resistance. When the top plate came down on the bottom plate, all of the excess oil oozed out around the plate and the plate was turning so slowly because there was so much resistance. From the, the oil sample from the ultrasonic separation process was different. It was less thick and when the top plate came down, the excess oil also oozed out around the plate. Um, at first, the rail meter was turning slowly, but then it started to go quicker to find a decent pace to measure the amount of resistance. So, the char two charts on the, on the screen were the charts that I received from the lab I worked at. They show everything that was measured by the rail meter. But the main thing I focused on was the temperature that it was at, which was always around 25 degrees Celsius, and then the viscosity. So uh, there were 12 different tests done on each oil sample, and the sample, um, the hydro transport sample, had an average of 74,933.73 centipoints, and the ultrasonic sample had an average of 1,347.54 centipoints. So this graph shows um, the all the results for each test. So the orange bars represent the hydro transport samples, and those span from the 60,000s to the 80,000s. The black bars at the bottom represent the ultrasonic sample test, and those span from the 300s to the 2000s. So as you can see, the hydro transport samples obviously had a higher viscosity than the ultrasonic sample. So I concluded that as hypothesized that as, as at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, the ultrasonic separation process produces oil with a lower viscosity than the current process, the hydro transport process. The reason I think that this may have happened is because the ultrasonic energy breaks up the bonds in the oil so much that the lightest oil floats to the surface of the slurry, leaving the heavier material like the sand at the bottom. And I think this is important because when you're working with oil sands and using the current process, you need to add diluents to the oil to ship it to the refineries. And with the ultrasonic separation process, there would be no need to use diluents. So that's better for the environment because then you don't have to dispose of the diluents when you're done with them. And then also um, it uses less energy which means less money to produce the oil. And overall, I just feel it's a better process. Well, I learned that um, 
using oil sands is a really big thing in Alberta and I didn't know anything about it before I did my test. So I feel that's important. Um. I'm just wondering what you've got planned next. Is there a part three? <laughs> um, well, I feel that there's not much more I can do with working with all the topics. So really the only thing that could be done with it is trying to use it on a commercial scale and seeing if it actually works. Because when I was using it, I was using like smaller beakers and I don't know if it'll actually work on a big scale. Morning. Morning, I'm Brian Max Simmons with uh, Worley Parsons. I'm just wondering if you brought a resume. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, my question is, uh, I'm curious if you made contact with Sonic Technologies, the research they're doing in Alberta on ultrasonic, and maybe with the university, if you had any uh, feedback from them. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Because you are from downtown. Just uh, curious, have you measured the oil content from the initial material and uh, the percentage you recover, you separate from that? Like how much of the oil was separated? Um, no, I didn't measure that. So I don't know the percentage of the oil that was actually separated. Another question is, uh, just curious, how you how do you generate how do you generate the sound waves and the vibration? So you use an ultrasonic processor and that generates sound waves. It's really <laughs> all I know, but I know the way it breaks the bonds is the ultrasonic when it produces a bubble and when the bubble collapses in the slurry it breaks all the bonds because it's so strong and that's how the bonds are broken. Any other questions? Well, on behalf of the Slugging It Out Committee, please uh, join me in thanking Mr. Alexander for our <laughs> well, That concludes our uh, first session. I'd like to thank again all the speakers for the first session and also thank Max and